So we're starting out in Isaiah 51, and it's uh, going to be verses 1 through 8. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody." Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arms shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear not the reproach of men, Neither be ye afraid of their revilings, for the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool, but my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Okay, we're looking at John 15, 9 through 17. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for a servant the servant knows not what his Lord does. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father have I made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. And in Acts 21, 1 through 9. And it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched... We came with a straight course unto Coas, and the day following unto Rhodes, and thence unto Patara. And finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went aboard and set forth. Now when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand, and sailed into Syria, and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unlaid her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days who said to Paul through the Spirit, 
that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And when we had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way. And they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. And when we had taken our leave one of another, we took ship and they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to Ptolemy and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. So you have your Bibles open next week. Lord willing, what I'm going to do is speak on this whole subject of the prophetic prophets and prophets in our day and how that goes and there's three references specifically prophets are telling Paul don't go to Jerusalem Paul goes to Jerusalem anyway we're going to try to unravel that and then the second thing there's four daughters that prophesy the next verse goes on which we didn't read and there's a prophet by the name of Agabus that comes and speaks and so we're going to, we're going to do that Lord willing next week today in the 21st chapter we're going to talk a little bit about Paul's encounters with people as he went from place to place going back to Jerusalem and back to Antioch where he came uh, from initially and was sent out and prayed over and that kind of thing. And so we see in this passage of scripture that Paul, uh, we're going to look at Paul's relationship specifically with the church. So if I would put this in a category, this is going to be a very pastoral ministry today, very pastoral. I'm going to talk about loving one another, relational skills, things. And by the way, just in case you don't know it, we have a problem with relationships in our United States of America. How many understand that? We're bad in politics. We're bad in education, the relational. We're bad in churches where we're, we just don't get it. Uh, relation, you know, marriages, Jim is talking about that, the, the attack that's on the family and that kind of thing. And so, but we can learn it. Everybody say we can learn it. So we're going to learn some golden rules that Paul lays out some, some ways really. It's called passive mentoring. It's looking at what some things that were done there by his crew. And we're calling this joy for the journey with Jesus. Would you say that with me? Joy for the journey with Jesus. Now, bottom line is God wants our joy to be full. Okay? He doesn't want us unhappy, doesn't want us depressed, doesn't want us ticked off at everything, kicking cans and dogs and cussing out little kids. Come on. We need to be people who are full of the joy of the Lord and are ready to witness for the Lord, ready to reach out in this day. The Bible says and there's coming a time when iniquity, lawlessness shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. We want to be full of the love of God. Amen? We don't want to be annoyed. We don't want to be turned off. We don't want to be just uh, carrying a depressive spirit in the midst of it all God wants us to be happy and I'm not talking about our own weird happiness I'm talking about the joy of the Lord doing what he's called us to do being fulfilled in our call our ministry what God has for us. somebody say amen to that and there's a key to that Jesus talked about it in the passage of scripture that we read that that joy comes from good healthy relationships joy comes from good happy healthy relationships doesn't mean there's not issues or you don't work through things but it does mean that we enter into a closer bond with Christ and with his body it means that we engage we put our wills involved in it we enjoy our process on earth and we also embrace we embrace we embrace what is happening in the Lord's house and his people amen so in, sometimes in the Bible, and when we go through a book of the Bible, I really like doing this because, yeah, we believe in uh, getting people saved, speaking in tongues, being baptized, be filled with the Spirit, healed, touched by God. Can you say amen to that? But that's not all that happens in life. Sometimes they are just going hundreds of miles. We just have kind of snippets of it. And this is probably over a period of a month, a month and a half, something like that. And uh, they're passing by islands and we we saw that but they stop and if you look back and this is where Jim ended last week in chapter 20 after Paul is speaking 
to these elders at Ephesus, here's what, this is 20, the last couple of verses, it says, having these things, he knelt down with them all and prayed. They wept much and embraced Paul and kissed him, kissed his neck, grieving over the words that he spoke, but mostly because he would never see their face again. So you see these people on the seashore with Paul, and actually we see that happen again in chapter 21, and we're going to try to capture what he did the last time he saw these people in terms of the relationship that the gospel of Jesus Christ brings us. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, help us this morning, I pray. Just help us to discern from the Holy Spirit, Lord, ways that we can be strong. We pray that that word that in lawlessness abounding, that the love of many will wax cold. We pray that that's no part of us. But we pray for an infusion this morning of the Holy Spirit in so much power and so much love, Lord, that it will take the negativity, the dark clouds, literally vanish them away and just motivate us to be full of compassion, full of the love of God, full of the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Acts chapter 21, Paul is going from place to place, as we mentioned, and he's saying his final goodbyes to most of these people. They will never see him again, and he's letting them know that. Now, you have to understand something about Paul. I have a little bit of idea of this. I've seen it happen in a small amount. Paul is the one that brought these people to their eternal salvation in Jesus Christ. And when you hook to people, I've had different pastors along my time of being a Christian. Uh, some of them are passed away and gone. Others of them are uh, still alive. And um, I have a special bond in my heart simply because this whole God thing, they were a part of that. And Paul came to people for the very first time with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is called the early church when Christians were started all over. Christianity and churches. It was the first time they ever heard the message. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And it was kind of a Jewish thing. They kind of reached out to Jews in Acts chapter 11, which we saw. God opened it up to the Gentiles, to the people who did not have a background, who'd never been to Sunday school, never understood the um, concept of who God is or what was going on. But in the midst of it, God brought salvation. And when you hook into somebody and that person becomes the vessel to whom God flows through, you have a very special affection. And so we have this in brothers and sisters and families and maybe neighbors or friends, and we have this bond that's there. That is a, a level that we have that. I still have people, I still have family members that I see. I saw one uh, this week, actually. And um, uh, we grew up together, and we're good friends, and we can talk about anything still. To this day, I can talk to them about God. In fact, when... Uh, when God was convicting me back in 76, I went and talked to my, my cousin and I shared my heart. I said, I don't know what's going on in me, but something is happening. I remember we went to a place in Minneapolis. Um, they had little hamburgers. It was called White Castle. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> you get 100 of them for a dollar. So I think you got 12 of them for a dollar. But anyway, there's very small. But, but we could talk about anything, and we still do, and those bonds are there. But there's a closer bonds, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, in the gospel of Jesus Christ because we're brothers and sisters in the Lord. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. We're not just a religion. We're not just a sidekick. We're not a country club called Northern Lights. We are the people of God. We share our vital Holy Spirit with one another. We love one another. We're walking together. When one is down, we pray for them, we build them up, we help them, we pray. Many of you gather around people every single Sunday, we have prayer, we believe God, even when we're not gathering together, we continue to pray for one another, we believe for the very best. If somebody does something that's really out there and kind of weird, we still battle for them. When sickness and disease comes, we rebuke it, we stand against it, we do everything we can do to bring life, amen, 
People, some people got mad at me because I was preaching last time uh, of the elections that good things were going to happen. And to me, there's no, I said what I told you, God said no over Joe Biden. If there's anybody here that's ever seen God say yes, please show me one thing that uh, brings manifestation to that and I'll change my tune. But I believe God for America. I believe God for health. I believe God for healing. I believe God for good in the midst of crisis and brokenness. So we're still going to preach good in God's love. Sometimes people go through disciplines of the Lord, but we stand with them. We love one another. We want to see the ultimate good. We want to say when we leave down here and say goodbye and we go up there and we say hello, we want to be in good shape when we leave this world spiritually. Our whole thing isn't just about having egg bakes as good as it is. Amen. And uh, I'm sure there'll be some good things, but it's the bonding of the spirit. Amen. Take time to Break some bread and break some egg bake while you're at it. Somebody say amen to that. Because it's not just about that. It's about bonding the body of Christ together in the love of Jesus Christ. Most of that happens over meals, ladies and gentlemen. Most of that happens over meals. We say when we meet, we eat. Amen. That's what people have said about it. We love, we do that. We do stuff. Why? I don't know if anybody else likes it, but I love it. Somebody say amen to that. It's good. It's healthy. It's the right thing to do. We're not just don't stick our nose up in the air every week and say, how are you? I'm gone. And you know, no, we love one another. We want to be together. We want to share together. That's what I want to talk to you about this morning in just a few moments, maybe medium amount of moments. <laughs> we'll see. So Paul is going from place to place. He had just said goodbye to one group, and he's going. And as they can, Paul, remember, he is motivated by the Spirit. The Bible said he's pressed by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. Why does he want to go there? He wants to go there for Passover so he can see his own Jewish people and give witness to Jesus that even more of them will come to Christ. Your own family members... There's a, there's a mission field, right? Your cousins, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your neighbors who are near you. Be praying for them, asking God to save their soul, reaching out to them. Some of them maybe have squabbles over whatever, but pray for them, love them, get beyond that, amen? And uh, see beyond the fault and see the need and reach out. And that's part of what we do as Christian people. So... Journeying with Christ grants not only eternal life, but it also will help to build strong relationships with people we meet along the way. Let me say that again. You have it up there. In our journey with Christ, we find not only eternal life, but also awesome relationships with people we meet along the way. God's job is not just to save us and to keep us as independent. And, and I'm independent, you're independent, we're independent as, as people in America. We, we think that way, we are that way. That's okay, I think, in a certain amount. But at the same time, we're meant to be a body and we're meant to be a house that's gathering, that's the spiritual house of the Lord, amen? We're the people of God. We relate together. We talk to one another. We share with one another. We pray with one another. And this becomes where it becomes a source of joy. This is where the greatest joy comes from, is when we learn to care for one another as God wants. What God wants us to do is to be down in this earth that's full of devils and demons and ungodliness and destruction and people who mutilate bodies of children, people who abort people, people who hate America, people who just are full of demonic spirits and want to see everybody in this world. They want to cut back. They want to destroy, lower the population. In the midst of that, God wants people who love him and serve him and will walk together, push away the darkness, push away the evil, and say, we're going to have a little corner of heaven right here in this church, right here in this home, right here in this neighborhood, right here in this family. In the midst of it all, you never see God taking people from earth and bringing them up into heaven, but you always see people of heaven God from heaven sending his son down to this broken earth 
to fill us. All of these places that we've talked about, Ephesus and Colossae and all of these places, they were full of demons. The boys and girls were prostitutes that were ungodly. I've been to some of those places. But in the midst of it, God says, go there. God says to Paul, go there and start a church. God says, go there. Sometimes he spent a few days, sometimes a few months, sometimes a few weeks. Sometimes they were throwing stones at him, beating him, kicking him out of the city. He runs to another city just for refuge, and he starts a church there. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. And so in relationship, so I want to just quote a little bit from our passage of Scripture that we read this morning, and so I'm just going to do some one-liners on this from the text. Here's what he says. We already saw that they had met together on the seashore, prayed together, wept over Paul. They left uh, those, uh, that, that group of people. They went to another one and they found the disciples. I'll talk about that later. But they remained with them for seven days. Paul told them through the Spirit. There's communication through the Spirit. We departed and we traveled on in verse 5. Uh, wives and children were escorting us out to our ship. We, have, we knelt down there and we prayed together. We bid one another farewell. We greeted new brothers that we saw along the way. Uh, Paul's companions stayed together from one place to another and reached out to them. And so you see this replete theme that goes over and over where there are words and portions of sentences that said that they loved one another. The greatest testimony that we have is not even raising the dead, getting somebody saved, getting, giving them filled with the Holy Spirit, letting them prophesy, sending them out to the nations. The greatest testimony that the church of Jesus Christ is, is oh, how they love one another. That is the greatest testimony that can possibly. Why? Because that's the greatest need that we have as people. God's kingdom is not made up so much of rules and laws and administrations and cities and states and borders as it is building and maintaining strong, solid, loving relationships with one another. That's God's heart. And there's a new dynamic that's released here, and it's talked about, and it's called joy, and we're going to look at just a few of these principles along the way to start off with, that here's some relational dynamics. If you're taking notes, here's a few things that are mentioned here in this passage as they go from one place to another, aboard ships, get by ships, go by islands that are mentioned there. In the process of that all, in between those lines, we see that there's a tremendous amount of, of God's love and healthy relationships that are there. So first of all, we have that Paul gave special regard and time and biblical principles to the church and leaders. Remember, he was there, and when before Paul left there, he's like, make sure, guys, you take care of this. Make sure you understand. Wolves will come in. Shepherd the flock of Jesus Christ. Care for them. Care for one another. Be aware. Stay with the Bible. Stay with the truth. Don't get caught up in some of these other things and some of the things that go on in culture. And by the way, we are not here as Christian people to follow whatever cultural. How many know that our culture is wayward and we don't know where we're going? We can't figure it out. They said a few years ago that there was some mysterious place over in Mars and maybe that's the missing link so we took all kinds of money and put them into rocket ships and, sh and they're still on their way there by the way right back in Clinton's time scratch your head well maybe that's where it is over there in Mars and it you know it's not folks they're, you know what they're going to find in Mars the same thing they find here a bucket of something amen and it might be dirt or sand or some kind of molecules on another planet but it ain't going to fix the broken heart only one thing can heal that, and that is the presence of the Lord, and specifically through other people, where God's love is shown and seen through the body of Jesus Christ. Here at Northern Lights, we don't focus on every fault and foible and issue and matter and wrong and things that are not done just right, but we focus on building good, esteeming whatever good things are there. We don't ignore them. 
but we look beyond that. We say there's something bigger. There's something greater. There's something bigger. There's a bigger picture here that we see, and that's embracing the kingdom of God that's before us. It's here today, and it will be forever, and we have this opportunity to connect with God and to build quality relationships with one another and to overlook the faults of others and look beyond that fault and see the need and spend our time in prayer and believing God and seeing good happen ultimately. Somebody needs to say amen to that. Secondly, they initiated, they were intentional, if you will, about visiting these people. They were going by these islands. And you got to remember this now. Paul is like, I got to get there. I got to get there. I, I got to get there. In fact, he even said, I'm not going to go to Ephesus. I'm going to call those guys over here because I got to get there. And then he's like, uh, yeah, we're going to stop by there. We're going to spend seven days with them. And we're going to spend a day. Got to remember, he's on his way. We have to understand sometimes we're busy in life. Sometimes other things are going on. But we have to take time to communicate God's love with people. We have to be on our own pressing beyond what is going on. We need to take time to pray for one another, love one another, care for one another. And Paul did exactly that, even though he had a greater or maybe a different or maybe a pressing matter that was there. And the Bible says when he goes to this one place, and while he's there, the Bible says he searched for the disciples. Here they are, they pulled up by an island. Maybe maybe the boat had to refuel diesel, but they didn't have diesel, but maybe they had to fix their whatever. Maybe they had to stop and do medical help. Maybe they picked up a few more customers along the way. Whatever they did, Paul said, we're going to go find the believers here. And the Bible says they looked until they found somebody. And it's the same word we looked at in chapter 11, where Paul went and found excuse me, Barnabas went and found Saul and he goes back to Tarsus. This is the perfect place, Antioch. And, and that word means that he went out, he went street by street, tent by tent. Where is Saul? Do you know where Saul is? I got to find him. Oh yeah, I saw him a couple of days ago. He's here and there. It means he's looking. Here's what we need to do. We need to be looking for brothers and sisters. We, that means take our time, our attention, our mental energies, and we're looking and we're finding ways that we can reach out. And that's exactly what Paul did. He went to people, hey, and this is what they do sometimes in the hills and the mountains of Mexico. They say, do you know any hallelujahs? And hallelujahs there means, means the the people, it means people like us. It means people that praise the Lord. They say, do you know any hallelujahs? You have you, are there any believers there? No, there's a cult down there. No, and we're not talking about that. It's just about, oh, gee, yeah, we heard about some Jesus people. He looked, and the Bible says he found those people and spent seven days with them to put more power, more presence, more Bible, more truth, more God, more love one another. It's my last time. Paul's like, I'm going to give you my very best that I have. I'm going to put in. I'm going by. You're not going to see me, but we're going to make this the very best that we can. Do you understand? We're all leaving this world. We're all on our way. Amen. We have a certain time we're born. We have a certain time we're going to die, but in between, God wants us to be consumed with looking at ways we can build others up and influence them for the kingdom of God and get them to heaven and help them in their earthly journeys right here, right now. The third thing that is there is they were open. They, they, they communicated with one another on a heart level. So I got a call just a couple of days ago from a, a guy, and I, I was in a meeting. I said, call you back. So I'm on the road. I'm calling him. and So he's asking me some pretty pointed questions. So I'm kind of I'm kind of dodging the questions. And because uh, I, I don't want to say some bad things about some things that are going on and so I said, brother, we've known each other for a long time. I'm just going to say it straight with you. Here's what's going on, okay? Now, we're not talking about dragging people through the mud, but we are talking, you got to be honest with one another in our relationship. It's like, this is going on. This, this is kind of bothering me right now. Um, sometimes it's kind of awkward. I've taken people literally by the hand and said, this is just really an awkward time for us, but God is big enough to carry us through this. Somebody say amen to that. Everything is not easy. Sometimes relationships become really muddy, mucked up. You can't 
understand exactly where they're going. Sometimes you have the other person mad at you, doesn't want to talk to you. I've li literally listened to people for up to three hours talking and talking and talking. And once they get it all out, everybody say, once they get it all out, then God can heal and work, and then you have earned your right to be heard when you listen to other people. Sometimes it's just listening. Sometimes as a pastor, I come and I talk to people, and people ask me questions, and I've had this happen several times. They sit there and they start talking their, all their problems, and pretty soon they start coming up with their own answers, and pretty soon they got, and I'm, I'm just, I'm okay. And they walk out and leave, and what just happened? I was just an ear to hear the process that was going on. They're good. I've had people say, I'm going back to my wife right now. I don't know what I was thinking of. You start hearing yourself and you start talking to somebody else. You'd be a sounding board. You'd be somebody who can listen. You can have a listening ministry to people who are having problems. Somebody say amen to that. Because when you get it all out, I've listened to professional people who are songwriters of Christian, and they said they come together, and he's, they say that some of these songs are the worst possible songs. They're just terrible. They don't rhyme. There's no rhythm. There's nothing going on. But once they get that out, everybody say, once you get it out, you got to vent it. You got to get it out. Sometimes you need to be a person who's just there on the other end. Why do you suppose they have bars and bartenders? They have guys, what do they care? They, they care about the liquor. No, they just want somebody just to kind of uh, this is what she yeah, left me again. I'm on my third one. I'm on my fifth one now. And I, yeah, you know, I'm soon to be a, I bet I'm two-time loser, three-time loser, four-time loser. I'm going to lose it again. And, you know, oh, I've been divorced so many times. And on and on and on. Everybody say God's big enough to fix it. Yeah, we're here to help, folks. We're here to be a sounding board. We're here to bring God's love. It's not just truth. Oh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, just believe in the Son of God. And you're welcome to the kingdom of God. And we're on to the next one. That's not what it's about. It's about connecting with one another and loving one another. And Jim has even said that when we say the sinner's prayer, it's like, what's that? I'm not saying it's wrong. To say the sinner's prayer. Bob, we gotta get him to pray. We gotta get him. I mean, just get over that and listen. Sometimes it's just put your hand right here and right there. You know, God is doing something. And that's just as you know what happened to me when I got saved? Okay, Lord. Okay. Yeah. There's no band, there's no music. Nobody led me in a sinner's prayer. I engaged my will. I heard the word of the Lord. It's like, yeah, yeah, man, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm after. That's what's moving me. And we need to be there for people. Amen? Paul modeled it, shared. People would come running up to Paul and they would say, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit's telling me. I woke up in the middle of the night last night telling you, you're, I don't know what's going on, but you're not supposed to go. How does that work? Come back next Sunday and we'll fix that one. But there's connections. Praying people have a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. People who don't pray are not sensing the Holy Spirit. I don't know what it is. People say, what's your vision of your church? Sometimes I say, here's, take the brochure and read it. <laughs> what's that? But when I'm full of the Holy Spirit, it's like, I don't care if I have a paper. I don't care if I have a pen that says Northern Lights on it. I said, let me tell you what Jesus is doing in my life. Amen. And, and somebody the other day, it was a missionary or mission, some, and they were coming up and they were saying that they had a brochure and they were saying, well, this is what I'm called to do. I said, brother, just close that up. Look at my eyes. Just tell me what God's called you to do. Don't look at your notes. Just tell me what's going on in your heart. What do you, what, what, what do you want? How can I help you? Amen? And, and that's what Paul did. They talked and they shared together with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we honor leaders and we honor them intentionally. Amen? If they're put there through the due process of law. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> As Christians, God connects with us he connects with uh, uh, 
He connects people from all parts of the world. I enjoyed, Ben. How many enjoyed that this morning, that missions report? You did so good, Ben. Thank you. Can, communicating, tell us about people, kind of their problems, some of the things that's going on. I got a little blurb from Todd, who's in Ukraine, and he's like, you can't share this with anybody because they'll find it on my phone. I'll be out. They'll, they'll get me out of here. And the last one I got, he's in the dark. That you can't even see anybody. And all you hear is that just that hideous. It's the bomb alert. Something's happened here. That's all. I didn't say anything. Didn't say pray. But in my heart, it's like he's saying, "I'm going through a hard time. Just pray for me right now." And sometimes with people in relationships, you know, you can have in such a relationship. It's like a rider of a horse. Any horseback riders here or am I in the wrong group? Okay. How many here have ever ridden a horse go like this? Well, good. We're good, good for you. <laughs> and, and you learn how to do the reins, right? I used to ride horse. And you learn how to do the reins. And then, then um, I would learn how to like make my horse back up and then you kick him in the ribs and then he comes up and you say, hi oh Silver, and you run on legs. I've, I've done that. One time I did that, and the horse kept going right over backwards, and I flipped right in the air, and I landed on my feet. He was going like this, and he, he went back further than I was what he was supposed to. And so I'm like, what just happened there? But you can be in communication with a horse where pretty soon you, it's called neck rein. You just lay, the, you just lay it on, on his neck and he'll, 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 go, he'll start going this way. You lay the reins the other way and they'll go the other, other way. Now horseback riders, and I've heard this said, that what their ultimate goal is is to have a relationship that's so close to the horse that they communicate on a thought level. I'm going left, and the horse feels it. The horse is thirsty, and the rider feels it. So what, what I'm telling you is in these dynamics of relationships with God and one another, we can learn to sense through the Spirit. That's what the Bible says, Paul. These people felt through the Spirit. They're not just saying, hey, Paul, uh, I got a good idea. I read a newspaper article here. No, I, I, sense, I, I sense in the Spirit God wants us to have the sense that we pray for one another. Brother Wayne's got, I, I, I'm going to just be praying for him. Now, sometimes we know, know about it. You know, somebody's going into surgery. We pray that. We, we pray the Lord will help him go through that. <clears throat> Amen? But we sense it. We pray and we sense it. And that's where God wants, that's relationships. You, 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 you can communicate even on the, just your eyes can tell you. Just your eyes. You can, you can just, you can see it. You can feel it. And that's where Paul was with these Christian people and with their group, one another. How would you like to be on Paul's team, by the way? Every place you go, you get arrested, you get thrown in jail, you get rocks thrown at you, you get beat, and they're like, let's do that again. <laughs> Was it that fun, boys? No, we didn't like it at all, but we started a church there. That, that old guy that was drunk and he got his wife, they got in here, he got saved, they got back together. Those little kids that were in that porno outfit, they're bailed out of there and they're coming to that church now beyond their hurts and wounds and rejections that they felt in the physical there was something bigger something greater driving them to see the glory of God come to this earth in building solid relationships that sin and ungodliness and demonic powers and governments cannot stop or cannot change because the power and the presence of Jesus himself is working through the church in such a majestic way in sensing and working in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that folks go by and say, my, my, how they love one another. My, how they love one another. They have a squabble and they fix it. And then God has 
people that we meet from all over the world, all different walks of life, all different kinds of ethnic groups as Paul did. Paul worked with different kinds of people. And you got to learn how to love people different than you. And there's even what's called one, if, if you like something. I was at a gun show and this guy, young guy was there. And I'm just, I'm just not bothering anybody. He says, you know what I think, mister? I said, no, I don't. I don't know what you think. He said, I just love to come to these gun shows. I said, well, why is that? He says, because I love guns. People who are here love guns. It's just my passion. and I get to be around other people who just like what I like. I said, well, good for you. I told this one guy. He says, you know what I think? Nope. You want to know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and he's having some struggles. I said, Happy wife, happy life. I start walking away. He comes around the booth. Happy wife, that's so good. That just makes so much sense to me. That just like, do you know what you just said? <laughs> yeah. What are you saying? Listen, be available, talk truth. What's common to you is golden to somebody else. Maybe they never heard it before. Maybe they just need to hear something. Maybe they just need to have, do you want to hear what I have to say? Yeah, I do. I do. Now, some guys can get on the fiddle and they can go a long, long time, let me tell you. <laughs> and, but, right? And you got to learn how to cut some of that off and stay to the point. Just keep it focused. Otherwise, you can have a problem. It's like, okay, let's work on this problem. Well, you know what happened to me 25 years ago? Well, 25 years ago, I met, do you know what happened to my mom? You know what happened to her mom? You know what happened to her mama's mama? It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not, let's not widen that. Let's just try to fix what's before us here today. Amen? And sometimes it's different people and God stretches us, stretches us into doing things we would never do on our own, doing things, working with people because God's, here it is, now listen carefully, God's love is bigger than your love. Your love has an end, your love has limits, your love has annoyance bounders, boundaries, your love is very, very, it, it can be good, it can be strong, it can be powerful, but it's not as big as his love. God's love is bigger. When somebody can cuss you out, spit on your face, and you can stand there and you can still operate in the love of God. Now we're talking Holy Spirit kind of love. It's a love that's beyond our love. It's a love when Jim Elliott, who is a missionary, smashes his airplane dies, leaves his wife and kids behind and his wife goes back to that same group of people that killed her husband and she starts a church there and today there's tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people that are there because somebody, it wasn't because of her love because she, was she could have been bitter at him, the rest, but she won because God's love is bigger. God's love always wins. God's love is so much more powerful. And the only way you get it, you got to get it from God. It doesn't come to you. You don't trip over it. You don't, you don't find it within you. It comes from above. It comes, God's love comes from above and it's stronger than us. It over, it overrides ethnicity. It overrides. And you got to understand, Paul's got a doctor there. He's got Luke. He's an intellectual guy. He's probably got little Johnny Bubby from wherever, side street. And he's there and he's just, Paul, I just want to go along with you. And he's not very intelligent, but he's just as important as anybody else. And Paul says, you're coming. You're coming with us. Amen. And the gospel creates the very, very best relationship. That's why we say church family. That's why we go down that right. And, and praying together, praying together, you bond to God through prayer and you bond also with people through praying. You bond together when you pray together. 
eternality of relationships. I'm going to move this. I just want to say that God gives us relationships that can be taken beyond this world. You can take relationships with you out of this world. It's going to be different, but God, they're not just, how do we know that? Because Paul is with these people. They're pray, they come, they, they, they're there, they're hugging Paul. They're, they're kissing his neck. We just love you. We honor you. All of the kids, all of the moms and dads, it's very clear. Wives, husbands, are, they're together. They bring Paul to the ship. They're, 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 they're weeping over him. They'll never see him again. And, and it's just like, that tells us if it's that strong on earth, if emotion is that powerful, there has to be a relationship that goes beyond this world. God wants us to have relationships that are not shallow but are ever deepening and it touches even into the eternal. It's beyond the temporal, it's beyond the feelings and it takes us into the realm of the spirit, into the realm of what God has for us next. And I wanna end with this. It touches the eternal. But there's also a dimension of the spirit. The Holy Spirit also comes into our relationships. Case in point, they keep telling Paul, if you haven't caught this next week, it, it's kind of toward the end of that, but it, we've probably heard two, three, four times already. Paul comes to a city. Hey, Paul, you're not supposed to go to Jerusalem. Hey, Paul, I'm just really troubled about this. Hey, Paul, they, they have this sensing in the spirit one to another and connecting with fellow believers opens up a whole new dimension in the Holy Spirit. It's never meant just to be a human relationship. Every human relationship will wither at the end and ultimately stop and die. Every human relationship. And we know that's true. But God has something beyond that, that we, we function in the, in the Holy Spirit. And people share with us. It's, it's just so good. God will put you together. You, it, God, God does this. God does the work. This isn't something you do. You can initiate things. You can try to get going. But if God doesn't bring his life and smile and blessing upon it, it's not going to go where it's intended to go. But when God brings people together, there's a powerful interchange that happens, a building that goes into... Yes, it does. It builds the kingdom of God. Paul stopped to people. We need to learn how to meet, greet, and head down the street. Amen? There's a right way that you meet people. There's a right way that you, you, you talk to people. You, 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 you start with kindness. You love them. Hey, how you doing? God bless you. Feeling good? Doing well? Life doing well? Man, I've had people. One time I was working for a bus uh, fellow bus drivers, I was telling everybody I knew about Jesus, I could, and I saw this one guy, he was a Spanish guy, and couldn't speak English real well, and his name, uh, that's where I learned the word brothita, because he called me brothita, hey brothita, how you doing, how you doing, and um, and so I'd see him, and he'd always just so full of the love of God, I saw him one morning, hey brothita, how you doing, how you doing, he dropped his head, I said, well, what's going on, what's going on, he said, my wife's going in, she's going to have surgery, it's just really, really bad. I said, Brother Lisa, let's pray. So what I'm telling you, it's not just this slappy, happy, upbeat, be nice, that's all the farther it goes. No, sometimes you say, oh my God, I'm so sorry for you. Let's pray right now. Let's just believe the Lord right now. Let's just ask God to touch even right now. God's listening to us when we pray. Right now, right here, in this moment, capture. Some of our Daughters went back to a reunion with a place that they worked as waitresses. They came back, and, and one of the girls were really sick and couldn't be there. And so one of the ladies said, well, we're going we're gonna to have warm thoughts for what's her name. And her daughter Katie was there, and she said, we can do better than warm thoughts. <laughs> Let's join hands. Let's pray to God, our Heavenly Father, right now, who hears us. Amen. What is that? That's a Christian that's tuned into the situation. It's like warm thoughts. Yeah, okay, warm thoughts for you, warm thoughts. 
God has something stronger than warm thoughts. As good as warm thoughts are, folks, it's not going to do it. But when we call on God, our Heavenly Father, call what's up above us to come down and beneath us and be shared among us, something begins to happen. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And God's Spirit will come upon right relationships. What happened on the day of Pentecost? The day of Pentecost said they were all in one place. They were all in one accord. They were all, and, and do you think, that, yeah, your kids are a little noise. Can you quiet? your kids down well I'm about done out of here I'm getting out of here no they said no Jesus said to wait he said wait let's let's get over let's pray let's pray for your little baby right now let's pray to stop crying stop crying please Lord (laughs) kidding but the idea is the Bible says they were in one place in one accord and God's like yes the Bible said there was a sound from heaven and we like to talk about the sound from heaven, the majestic winds that came, the, how God came. Where did that come from? That came from people who brought themselves in one accord, refused to have any disunity, refused to have anything that would quench the Spirit. No, we're going to do just what Jesus said. He said he's coming. Did they know what the Holy Spirit, did they know what the day of Pentecost was? They didn't have a clue. But Jesus said, just tarry there, just wait there. Just pray there. Keep yourselves together. And the Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one place in one accord. They heard a sound of a Russian might rushing, not Russian, (laughs) rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the place. I, I pray God gives us another Pentecost here. I pray the winds of the Spirit come upon us in such a way we're, we're together and God looks down, yes, 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 yes. That's what happens in revivals and that's what we're praying for and believing for. That's when you can stop the fighting and argumenting with everybody else and they're just like, yeah, I need Jesus, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Amen. And then let's close with this. Jesus said, this is my commandment that you, what's the one commandment that Jesus left? It's just one. Come on. Not that you don't know. What is it? Come on. Love one another, right? And he said that my joy may be in you and that your joy might be full. Okay, did, did you catch there's two different kinds of joy there? One thing is to have the joy of the Lord. It's like, God, you know, you're good. You're, you care for me. You lay down your life. You resurrected. You took me out of the mess that I am. I'm not a sinner anymore. And, and that's the joy of the Lord. And that's good. We got, we got to have it. But then he says, your joy. See, it's my pocketbook and your pocketbook. They're not the same thing. Okay, I got God, my heavenly father. He'll help me out of anything that I ever need. Anytime, any situation I ever get in. I've had people say, well, how are you going to get there? I might be down in Eau Claire. And if if somebody's fissing and fussing and moaning over what, helping me out, it's like, don't waste yourself. I got God. I've hitchhiked before. I know how to get where I'm going. I don't care who I am. I can get there. Don't worry about me. God's got this. That's called security. That's knowing your heavenly father. That's going at the place of thought. That's where you look up and say, God, it's a mess down here. I don't know how I'm going to get out of here, but you're going to get me out of here. I don't know how it's going to happen, but you're going to get me out of here. Amen? That's right. And he does. And he will. That's one, that's one level. And that's good. Okay? But there's another level. That level is your joy. Everybody say, my joy. Okay, God wants you to have his joy. He wants you to partake in it. But he also cares about your joy. So I pray for things that I like. I pray for things that I want. I pray for people. I pray for uh, people who are lost. I pray for missionaries. I pray for leaders in our church. I pray for church congregations. Sometimes I pray for all the men. Sometimes all the women. Sometimes families. Some, whoever. Different ways, different times. Just kind of as I feel and, and uh, as, as I'm directed. And, and uh, sometimes I'm not filling or directed, but I just show up for prayer. Amen. And let, let God meet me there and it's gonna, he's going to meet. That's okay. God is like that. But let me tell you something. God cares about your joy level. He wants you to have joy. He wants you. He wants your cup. 
my cup. Everybody say, my cup. <laughs> my cup runneth over. That's what he wants. He cares about you. He cares what goes on there. And he will do it. He's, and, he, and the only prerequisite is just stay with my one commandment. Work through it. Love continually. Let my love, just, just work with it. What happens? God fills up my bucket. And when God fills up my bucket, I'm happy. And when I'm happy, everybody's happy. <laughs> Stand with me this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord causes face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. His face.